what I wanted to do for my senior thesis and I was having a conversation with my advisor, Dr. Chris Martin, uh, and he works with uh, Australian dioecious spiny selenums and he was telling me that the last time he was in Australia, which was I think 2009, he noticed that he would find a specimen here and one, say, 20 feet away, and one would be covered in insects, absolutely savage, and this one would be fine. And I thought about it, and I thought, that's really weird. Why? <laughs> Why would that happen? Um, and I had read some papers in a different family of plants where the sex of the plant had an impact on insect choice and I thought that's a good place to start um, but I didn't really know I hadn't seen these plants in the wild and before I kind of went charging forwards doing what I thought was maybe a good idea but I didn't really know I thought maybe we should do some field work so we went to Australia and I had a look at uh, some of the um, Solanum asymmetrophyllum that are growing in Kakadu National Park, which is in the Northern Territory in Australia, so like right at the top in the middle. And, uh, and I didn't find what I was looking for. <laughs> I found other things. <laughs> so I was looking for a link between sex and herbivory. And I did find a small difference. However, it was not statistically significant. Uh, one of the issues that I found was that uh, asymmetrophyllum is not very abundant. It's, it's kind of rare and uh, I think my sample size was about 21 specimens. So all of these results I'm taking with a pinch of salt but it really has served as an introduction to what I have to do for the next year. So right now I have six or seven hundred asymmetrophyllum growing in my greenhouse, much larger sample size, and I will look again at the question of is there a link between sex and herbivory, um, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that front. We'll, we'll see how that pans out, but there were some other correlations that arose, so there seemed to be a link between the sex of the plant and how lobed the leaves were, which is not something that had been seen elsewhere before, so I'm not sure if that was something from this sample specifically, or if that's a link that I'm going to see in the future. Uh, there seemed to be a link between pH of the soil and the sex of the plant, and there was definitely a strong link between herbivory and the color of the leaves and the size of the leaves. And initially I thought, well, yeah, of course, if, if I'm a leaf and I'm being eaten by an insect, then I'm going to divert my energy away from photosynthesis and I'm going to try and protect myself instead. So the green color is going to come down. Then I did a bit more background reading and I have seen that in some other species there can be an up regulation of carotenoids in response to stress. And so that's something that I want to do some assays on in, in, in the fall just to be sure that that's not at play. And I have a lot of really fun things planned for the fall. I'm going to do some insect choice between male and female. I'm going to do some insect choice between plants that are yellow and plants that are green. I have um, some funding to be able to do some transcriptomics, which I'm mega, mega excited about. And uh, yeah, so hold this space. This is just the introduction. And hopefully this time next year, I'll be back here at Botany 2014, and I'll present a lot more data. That's my plan. Thanks so much.